Hello everybody, uh, welcome to the Dental Fix RX CDET training video. This is pre-training video number one. Uh, the content is my panel, uh, which is the landing page of our Run DFX software. Uh, my name is Andy Cohen. I'm narrating uh, this video and others during your pre-training. So let's get right into it. I want to show you the my panel. Uh, when you log in to Run DFX, I'm logging in through the demo site. It takes you to the landing page. This is the landing page. We refer to this as my panel. Now you can zoom in and out of this uh, by hitting uh, Control or Shift and uh, make the, the screen slightly uh, larger with Shift uh, Plus and smaller with Shift Minus. So I zoomed in a bit so you have a bigger view. Uh, so I'm going to walk you through some of the key functions here. Uh, the landing page, my panel, was designed. So you can run your entire business effectively through one screen. So essentially it's like a dashboard where you have all the critical data, links to specific reports, uh, everything you need uh, accessible from one page. Now, when you click my panel, it refreshes the page. Uh, it also takes you back to this screen no matter where you are. If you could click a day on the calendar, uh, you click my panel, it takes you right back, and I'll demonstrate that throughout this uh, this session. Be careful though, because uh, you always need to have this this landing page accessible to you. Uh, what I mean is, a lot of the windows that pop up uh, are they're designed to be pop up windows. So when you go to another section, uh, another page, you open an estimate, you open a ticket, whatever you may open, uh, it often pops up as a separate window, and they can be closed by hitting the X. Uh, they can be minimized as well, uh, but if you close them, uh, you're completely safe. Uh, be careful as you're closing windows. If you close this main browser box, uh, your main screen, you're going to have to log back onto the software. So always be sure to keep uh, the, the panel with uh, the icons on the left, this main landing page open, uh, even when you're navigating through the software. So let's start by going through the search bar here at the top left. This allows you to search the software, uh, the entire database for various information, critical information. So uh, every uh, ID, every lead customer, every dental office in the territory uh, does have a unique and a, uh, ID number. We can search a uh, ID number. Uh, once you place the information in the text box, you click the magnifying glass to do the search. You can search various information. You can find the information you can search by clicking the drop down menu and it shows you everything that you can search. You can even search contact name. This will search the entire database for that specific contact name. Now when you do a search it lists by contact uh, every Claudia in this case that you'd have in the entire database. Uh, you can search all this critical information. Now, the box under that, this drop down menu automatically defaults to customer and lead. That's not, you don't need to change that necessarily um, unless you're wanting to, you definitely want to find somebody that's specifically with a lead. But this will search the entire database for customers and leads. Based on what you select here, this box will be pre-populated. So if you decide you want to search for a serial number or let's say a make, uh, something that you've entered, it's going to assume automatically here that you want to search an invoice or an estimate. So really you don't have to um, uh, play with this option. Uh, it will understand what you're doing. It's smart enough and intelligent enough to, to make the assumption based on what you, what search criteria you're using here. You can also search tickets in the bottom search box. Uh, you can search tickets, which is a work order. A ticket is actually a job, but you can only search open tickets. The quick ticket search only allows you to, to search jobs until they've been closed. So once you've completed the job, you've invoiced it, you've gone to the meeting, you've fulfilled the obligation that you have to your customer, uh, and the ticket has been completed, you close the ticket, then th that ticket's not available through the quick ticket search option. Now I'm going to quickly go through the icons here on the left. You have an add lead icon. 
This allows you to add a, a dental office to the database that you didn't find in the original uploaded list. You may have those as uh, your territory grows, dental offices move, they reopen, they open second locations. Uh, you would add a lead right to the database. You have to go to the text box uh, and fill in the required fields. Once yeah, it's done, you click save. Now, if you want to get out of this and go back to my panel, again, simply hit my panel, takes you right back to where you want to go. There are some specific reports that we'll touch on in a video later. Uh, so I won't uh, spend too much time on this. These reports are critical to the business. A lot of those reports are linked to uh, through the red numbers here in the software. There are some additional reports as well that you can find. We'll review those with you uh, at a later date. You can also add an order. That, that means you want to add a purchase order. You want to buy parts or equipment uh, right through the software. Uh, that's how you do that. Uh, you click add order right from here and you can begin to compile a sales order, uh, pick the shipping method, you select the vendor, you search for a part number. There's other videos as well that are going to get more into the detail about adding order, but you can access the add order page uh, right from my panel. And then there's an account page as well. That account page uh, is where you have the administrative settings. Uh, there's notifications and some things that you can set and you can change. Uh, the default settings uh, generally stick uh, if you want to make changes to some of those default settings on some of the available tools you'll go to account and you'll find all those options so my panel itself consists of a couple things uh, the top section I'm showing you only the top section right now the top section will allow you to again run your entire day the first uh, and the biggest piece of it is the calendar. So when you're looking at the calendar, uh, there's a couple of functions we won't get into specifically. There are a lot of them are self-explanatory. Uh, drop down menus, you can view a full calendar. This takes you to the entire month. Um, and you have some display options as well. But when you're looking at the calendar, you'll have the option that you'll be able to see T's on the calendar. The T's will identify those tickets. So if you have specific jobs set up on certain dates, then you'll see the T displayed. You can click on that day specifically and it'll show you all the tickets you have. You can click further in into the REP, which in this case is a repair ticket. Uh, this is coded differently for different types of tickets and you can discover all the information specifically related to that job. I'm not gonna take you there. We're gonna save that for a later video. Uh, but again, the calendar shows you the jobs that you have currently for that day. Uh, from a, a bird's eye perspective, you can see how many jobs you have scheduled. It will list all the T's for your, for your day. Another thing it does, it allows you to store follow-ups. So if you're making marketing calls and you decide to schedule yourself um, a, a follow-up um, and put something on your calendar as a reminder of a task, a to-do task, uh, that will be listed right here uh, in blue. This CL links you right to the call log. The call log is a history of the correspondence that, you, that, that has been made with your customer between either yourself, uh, the members of the operation support staff, uh, any contact that we have uh, that is had with a customer is stamped, time stamped, labeled, and detailed in the call log. So if there's a follow-up activity, you can code that follow-up to be on your calendar. You can tell that uh, through a checkbox, and we'll discover that a little bit later in training, uh, and, and that will show on your calendar for that specific day. This is an example of a follow-up made from a call log that I put on my own schedule, uh, a reminder to call Kilsey Dental Corporation to call and set up an appointment with Dr. Kilsey. The calendar has all that information so you can manage your day just like you would with an Outlook calendar. You can put reminders. Obviously, you can do follow-ups and schedule yourself meetings. Uh, work orders, aka tickets, will be scheduled on your calendar. Uh, it's all there for you. Then I'm going to explore these red numbers. So I'm going to get into just a little bit of detail. Uh, all these numbers hyperlink to reports. I'm not going to show you too much detail about those reports specifically, but I want to show you what they link to and how that data is important for you. 
I mentioned that you can add orders by going right here. Well, if you click on total orders in the system, this gives the history of uh, all the orders that have been placed. So you can see those. Now you can close these. Uh, you can sort these by vendor. You can sort them by the open orders, the closed-in orders, uh, those that have been sent to the office uh, and submitted to the vendors. Those are still in pending status. Um, you can see all those right here by clicking on the uh, hyperlink number next to total orders in the system. You have a similar reporting function for unpaid invoices. When you click on that hyperlink number, it takes you to a report of the invoices that have not been paid. From here, you can obviously collect payment, you can add payment, that sort of thing. Uh, so if a check comes in, you want to add a payment, you would click, simply go right here. Uh, if you're doing some collections efforts, you're calling, you're looking to you know, uh, handle collections and, and collect anything that's been outstanding, uh, you want to make an initiative to, to push to uh, take care of any outstanding invoices, uh, your best, my recommendation would be go right to here, go down the list and make the phone calls. If done right, that unpaid invoice amount will stay low. There's also open estimates. If you want a spark of activity, let's say you've written estimates and it hasn't been closed yet, you haven't secured that business, uh, commitments haven't been made, uh, you have a pipeline of, uh, of estimates that are getting old, you want to go ahead and close those or you want to secure the work. Uh, you can click on the open estimate tab, take it right here to this report, view all that information, make phone calls and see if you can secure more work for yourself. Uh, if the estimates have been declined, it's work they're not going to do, you can write from this page click through and you can close those estimates so they're not going to show on the open estimate report. You also have total open tickets. Now this is critical in running your daily operation of your van. Total open tickets show all these T's, all these tickets, your actual jobs listed in a workable format. So when you click on this it actually shows you the name of the customer, the name of the lead, the purpose of the ticket, uh, what it was coded as, repair, meet and greet, estimate, that sort of thing. Uh, the date, and all critical information. Now, on all these reports, you can customize your view to have whatever specific data showing as columns. So if you don't want the urgency to show, then you would uncheck that box, save the view, and now the urgency is not on this report. You can put, pick uh, different columns to show, different data to show in all your reports. All the reports are customizable by finding this view tab. What this ticket report shows you is a running to-do list of everything you've got going. You've got all the jobs that you haven't completed, you have an invoice that are maybe uh, in, in front of you, uh, all in one place. Again, you can also see them by identifying the T's on the calendar. This information down here is also a, a nice reference point for you. It shows you by period. Uh, the periods are today, yesterday, the week, the month, and the prior month, uh, some of the critical information, uh, it's, it's critical to your business. So it shows you how many incoming calls have been received during that period, how many outgoing calls have been made during that period, how many tickets were created during the period, invoices created, amount of total invoices created, or total amount. So this is one invoice totaling $204.12. And also how many payments you've collected that uh, during that period and the amount of the payments that you've received. Now again, as these are read, they're hyperlinked to specific reports. We want to see prior month's invoices. We click right on that. It will take us to an invoice report that lists all the invoices between 9-1 and 10-1. Everything for the month of September. You can write from there. You can also change the date and rerun reports. Again, this these hyperlinked numbers, these red numbers, get your right to reports, you can view customize views, change data periods, and that sort of thing. You see at the bottom there's tabs as well. These tabs aren't critical to your daily operation. The Operations Support Center itself uses these tabs and manages their call rotation on your behalf. So I'm going to click on the tabs and show you a little bit of detail so you understand what these are for. If you click on leads, that initial tab, it's going to actually show you all the leads in the system. 
all the leads in your database. So currently you can see at the bottom there's 572 leads. This is a, a rather large territory. Um, typically territories aren't the size, but we're just playing in the test database here. So you see all the leads. It's got the unique identifying uh, number here to identify the name of the company. It's got critical information. It's got a next call date. The reason this is not critical to you is you're not going to work off of that screen and we'll, we'll train you how to properly manage your customer base and your, your lead database. But what's going to happen is uh, the operations support staff is going to use the next call date, this column here, to identify their calls for the day. It's done in its rotation. There's a formula that dictates uh, how often these calls get made. So we maintain constant communication and marketing efforts to your leads as well as your customers. So again, this is for the operations support center. You won't generally work off of this screen, but you can see uh, it's very similar for leads and for customers. There's also multiple pages that can be scrolled through here. And when you get to the back of the list, that means you've gotten through all, in this case, 84 customers. So there's the front end of your database, basically. There's all the leads and customers that you have in your system. Uh, for the operations support center to do their their rotation uh, and their marketing calls you also have follow-ups listed here now i don't have any uh, current follow-ups tomorrow but i do have one for today today being thursday october 9th so being that it's thursday october 9th i clicked on the day and i can see that i'm supposed to call to set up an appointment with dr kilsey i scheduled this for myself and i put it on my calendar those are also listed down here under the tab for follow-ups. The Operations Support Center again uses this function to manage some of their follow-up activity. Uh, you could use this. Uh, you can also access the information a lot uh, easier uh, right here by looking at the calendar day and identifying the activity. There's also orders. So we realize that we can look up here and see the total order orders in the system. You can also look down here and you can see the detail of the purchase order. If you click through the purchase order, you'll see the exact order with all the detail. You can look at the ones that have been sent, submitted to the vendor, the ones that haven't been sent. You can look at all of them, so on and so forth. Now, this same detail is going to be listed right here um, under total orders, but here's a quick way to access the orders. Uh, and again, detailed purchase orders can be viewed by clicking right here on the purchase order. You also have a running tab of invoices, all the invoices that you've created in the system. Now, this is just a running tally, and it's nice to see, but if you look again at the invoices created here, you can look at it by a specific time period and run yourself specific reports. I've gone through my panel uh, in some detail. You'll be exploring more of this during your additional training uh, when you're here in Davie and then ongoing. Uh, get comfortable with my panel. Uh, that is the end of this training video one. Thank you very much for your time.